Hello and welcome to this Oxid Academy training. In this video, we will create an Oxid eShop console command. To do so, we use the product data reader component we developed in the components video and we'll extend this with the command. But first of all, let's have a look on the OE console. The console is called on the CLI with vendor slash bin slash OE minus console. If you execute this, you see the list of commands you can execute. What we want to do is to extend the list of commands with our own one. To start, we create a new directory inside our SRC directory. This is not mandatory, but it's good practice to put all command classes into a directory SRC slash command. In there, we create our new class data reader command and make sure to add the correct namespace oxid training backslash product data reader backslash command at the top. Now we must ensure some defined contents. First of all, our class must extend Symphony's command class. Then we need to add two methods, configure and execute. These methods must follow the defined signature, even if you do not want to use input or output data. The configure method is, as the name suggests, to configure our command details with the provided methods. We must set a name and should set description and help text. The command's name can be defined in any form, but we stick to a naming where we describe vendor, affected section, and actual command name. These parts are separated by colons. It's not only Oxid specific, but also done similarly within the Symphony framework, which provides the base for the OE console with its console component. This is why we highly recommend to use this convention. So in our case, first we write the vendor abbreviation OXTR. This is followed by the affected section like cache or module. We use product minus data. At the end, we append red to actually name the command. If you follow this naming schema, your commands are grouped by your vendor name like you've seen with all the OE commands. The example also sets a short description and a more detailed help text. That's it with the configure method. The execute method is, also as the name suggests, the method that is called when running the command from the console. We can implement whatever logic we want in this method. For the moment, we want to add a simple test output. You can do this with the provided output interface. Pay attention that the execute method must return an integer value. In this example, we return the constant success provided by the command class we are extending. You may return any integer value, but obviously you should stick to the standards. That's all for now. Our command functionality is prepared and now we want to make it available on the console. Registering the command follows the same process as registering a normal service with just one little difference. Therefore, we open our existing services.yaml file and add another service entry. Again, we use the namespace as service identifier, but this time we must add a special tag named console.command to tell the framework that this is not a normal service, but a console command instead. Make sure to set auto wire to true. This is mandatory since we auto wire our data reader service and our data reader command service. Please notice that we did not set public to true. A command is always called within the framework by executing it on the console. The service should never be retrieved directly from the container factory. Therefore, no command service should be publicly available. We can also set some defaults in our own services.yaml file to ensure the desired configuration. This will lead to the following contents of our component services file. After adding a new entry to a services.yaml file, you should clear the cache again. The second service, our data reader command, is registered then in the service container and can now be executed via command on the console. First check may be to simply call the OE console and have a look at the command list. If everything was configured correctly, there should be a new group OXTR including the OXTR product data read command. After verification the command is in the list, you can simply run it like all the other commands. After executing your command, you should get the test output on the console. In the next step, we will bring in some more logic. First of all, we want to add an input to the command to get the item number for our data reader service later on. To do so, we need to add one line of code to the configure method as well as another one to the execute method. All we have to do in the configure method is extending our existing method chain with the method add argument. The first argument is mandatory and can be every name you can think of. We simply use item number. 
All other arguments are optional and affect the desired input argument. In the above example, we set the item number as a required argument when executing the command. If we decide to not do so, we should add a check or fallback in the execute method in case of a user does not provide any item number. The configure method is finished now, but we need to effectively read the argument in our execute method. The input interface is already available in the method and provides us with suitable methods. Since we do want to read a single argument, we can use the getArgument method and pass our defined name item number. Now we have all we need to make use of our existing data reader service. Since we are in a service, we can easily auto-wire the service in our command class. We simply add the constructor property promotion, but this time we also need to add the parent call due to the extension of Symphony's command class. After making the data reader service available with auto-wiring, we use it in the execute method. This means we now ask for the provided item number. Then this value is passed to the data reader service. The service returns an array in any case. This array has the value match, which tells us if a corresponding product was found or not. If yes, we have title, price, and URL in the returned array and can write it to the console with the write line method from the output interface. If everything is done, test your command with an existing item number as well as a false one. Our component is now finished. All implemented code is encapsulated in the extension. This provides good maintenance and ensures the updatability of the base shop. For more information and tutorials about the Oxid eShop, check out our other videos or head to the online documentation.